Good morning, everybody, and it's fantastic to be back in a, um, albeit slightly strange setup for our community board, but fantastic that we could all meet together. Um, we've got a big agenda, so let us um, just get underway. Will everyone be able to be picked up on this? Yep. Okay, fantastic. I'd love the team to tell me if this is Okay, fantastic. All right. Um, as we go through, we've got everybody here, so obviously no apologies. Um, our public forum, I don't think we had anybody register. No, there's no one waiting up there. Okay, all right. Any items not on the agenda? There are no items not okay. on the agenda. Any conflicts of interest? Yeah, I want a last item. Okay, all right. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, and our last minutes for com confirmation, item uh, 1.6. Anyone have, can I get a mover or a seconder for those minutes, please? I'll move. Thank you. Yep. Jeremy, thank you. And any comments? I presume my information will be coming up in a later report. Um, only in the program report. Yeah, it's, it's item 2.2 .2 of the minutes, and I'd just like to have a little bit of an update on that um, for particular reasons. We can do that. Program report. Okay, yep, I'm happy with that. All right, okay, so all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Teresa, you did make an amendment, and I made it clear. Oh, sorry, yes, I did pick up a typo. Just if you look to your screen, there was just a date typo there that I let Jen know about yesterday, so that has been amended. Anyone opposed? No, carried. All right, fantastic. Our next um, item is 2.1, our correspondence report. Um, can I get a mover and a seconder for that report, please? Thank you, Bill. Seconded by Tony. I'd like to talk about it. Yes, all right. Uh, so the correspondence I'd like to address is the reply to Judy Brokers in terms of water use, which I haven't got the document right in front of me at the moment, but what that suggestion is, is that factually we have sufficient water for the next 30 years, which to me is a useful thing to publish, because that's the sort of information that I think our community is aware of, notwithstanding, then the letter says, if I have read that right, that garden watering a permitted activity from Greg Roach to Judy Brockers. So if that's the case, then how come I didn't know that so I could water my garden, like many people, basically cut mine down and put it in the compost because I had no water. Mm -hmm. So um, that matter for me, if that is factual, that information isn't what got into the media or in any, any form of communication, so we all know, and yet it would have been helpful because a lot of the answers we got was people doing just that, out watering their gardens, people rigging up and potting them, and people running around, and yet here we got official correspondence to a citizen telling them information that we actually I didn't have, but no one else has got, let alone the fact that it was permitted to water your garden. So I don't know, it might be something that Bruce wants to comment on later on, but if that is not correct, we'd better go and correct it. And if it is correct, it would have been helpful to go and tell everyone about the same thing um, and not just have that turn up like it did. So that's my comment on the communication, but I have more on water later on. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tony. Do you want to... I'm happy to talk about that later if you want to... Yeah, if we could. Later, we can discuss that. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Anyone else? No more comments? I, I had one comment. I, in our last meeting, we, in reading through the minutes, it reminded me we'd asked to send a letter congratulating for, uh, Skate Park Trust on um, just how well they were doing on their fundraising. Did that letter go? I never saw one. No, I don't think, I think so. so. Okay. All right. It might be a... Sorry. Another comment. Um, should we discuss the letter about the concession to Peter from the Peter Beach ratepayers during the concession discussion? I thought that that would be the best time to discuss it. Yeah, that's a correspondence issue, but that should sit 
of that discussion. I've noted as a tabled item here, and okay. um, so we're aware of it. And those, of course, something that just came in today. So I'd oh. like you to share. Yeah, if you could share that, that would be great. Now, I don't know if there's any other copies. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. I apologize for the front time. A copy for everything. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Share if you don't mind. No problem. Oh, this is Blackie. Apologies, gentlemen. This just came through over the counter, so I just will get you a copy. That's right. You're right. Copy <laughs> Okay. All right. So we'll pick up on. Um, the Otama rate pairs when we get to the concession piece. Yes. Okay, so we just need to receive the correspondence report, don't we? That's right. Yeah, so we should. Okay, which takes us to our next item, which is 2.2, .2, which is the Mercury Bay Community Board. Can I just ask a question before you go? Are we accepting this as part of the correspondence? All right, so we need to. Um, if I can have it, I can just type it in there and it will be all noted as tabled. Okay. So yeah, do you want to take this one? Does it need to, need to be moved in? Table correspondence be included in the correspondence. Yes, please. Yeah. So That's in part of the um, original suggested resolution, so we're clear of what. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. We have that. Thank you. Thank Can you. Can I just speak to that now? That letter? Yeah. Yes, I've only read it really briefly. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Do you know about Samson. it? Yeah, I do. Alex Sampson, who's in town here, um, rang me and said they want a group want to do a community garden just to grow vegetables for food, not like the big one we had where they want a community garden to plant bits and pieces. So I was the one that said to a right to council, get it on the community board. And the council and, and, and the community board will discuss where there's a bit of land where they just want a plot that they can grow vegetables. That's all it is, and they look at doing for different social things around town. And the, isn't that in line with what's happening out of the bike park? I thought that was. That, isn't that the that same that's sort right. of setup? This could be. Yeah. yeah. If it needs another group that wants to do it, I'm. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, well, if it, if it already exists. Well, maybe they come, just need to talk. My okay. comes with all the groups want to do it, but it's gone because uh, yeah. I gave them land to fire and a new one there. And I, I think people growing food is a damn good idea. So Absolutely. They've got bits of waste land that are not being used and they can be growing vegetables and for the community or what to do. Through the chair, I think yeah. Um, yeah. one of the principles behind that is that it's um, in town and it's, um, and it's you know, teaching kids. And it's teaching kids, and kids can walk there from their yeah, house rather right, than yeah. have to go all the way out to the industrial zone. So. Do they have a site in mind? No, no they don't. Okay. 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 Well, right. One thing they mentioned was a corner of White Street. They didn't mention that. Oh, oh there's 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a question on um, format. Um, White Street section, is that something that I need to bring up in my um, members report? Yes. Cool. Cool. Okay. Okay. Item 2.2, .2, which is the work program. Can I just have a mover and a second to receive these? Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Right, any discussion? Um, I do know, Murray, just Going back to your earlier comment that the waste transfer station replacement is an item on our next workshop agenda. Did okay, you have something I'll more leave, specific? I'll leave it our next workshop agenda. Okay. Um, I'll just say here that I have some concerns about progress. I have concerns after talking to the consultant about the whole project. I'm very uneasy, so I'll leave it at that. And so the workshop will be good because we can figure out. Absolutely. And so, uh, similar vein, um, so I'm now referring to some of the comments on social media. <clears throat> and there's some talk that the sheriff blocked, there's some issues up there. Now, um, if they are, I don't know what they are, but I'd like someone to tell me that we do or we don't have some problems. Um, so that maybe um, someone in time can respond to the social media stuff if it's not right. Mm -hmm. Through you, Madam Chair, that, that's an item that will also be on the next workshop agenda for discussion. Okay, well, like I just said, so there must be something out there because people, no, people do write stuff on social media without thinking and without understanding 
And I understand that. I'll put it up myself in the past. But all I'm saying is if someone is on there now saying it's a problem, there is some talk in the community somewhere that's done that. And we won't meet for another six weeks. And between now and then, there'll be six weeks worth of clap trap on the social media. We've got to work it up for three weeks. Yeah, we'll, uh, well three June weeks. something. So if you go and read social June media, June. it's 100 posts a day, mm, and people are raising me. stuff we need that to none of us are aware of, mm. that we're going to find out in six weeks' time, or three weeks' time, is it something we should be heading off now? That's all I'm suggesting, because... Can I, There's a group in town at the moment that are raising a whole lot of stuff through social media, which is ill-researched, and is in essence not right, and it's not actually complimentary of us, and some of us in this room are not the people making the decisions. And in fact, the other one we've got, with a lot of it here at the moment, I didn't even know what's happening. So uh, all I'm trying to say is that rather than... Let the social media drive our agenda. Mm -hmm. Let us get on the front foot and start driving it for a change. Couldn't it make more? Did you want? Yeah, for this press comment. Um, there, there is some discussions going on in relation to the sheriff. Not that they certainly are not anywhere near being able to be put into the public arena at this point in time. Um, but the assurance I would give you is that what we are doing is ensuring that appropriate and due process is being followed and everything is being done in a, in a correct manner in relation to the future development of that bit of land. Um, Does that affect the summer concept? Um, I, can't, I can't say any more than I've said at this point in time. Yeah. And it's, only, yeah, it's only just come up in the last week. So. Well, so I raise that, obviously. So I'm unaware of what those problems are until I pick my phone up and read it. Mm. And for me, that is not good enough um, yeah, because I can't respond, I can't react. When the phone rings, I'm sitting there saying, I don't even know what you're talking about. And then someone says, I am the person that's uninformed. Well, I am uninformed. There's nothing I can find out. Well, we're going to get this on the agenda for June 10th at our workshop. So Can, can I just say, problems is absolutely and definitely the wrong word. There's no, there is no problems here. There are no problems. Good. Great with the there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, everything is well and truly under control and there are no problems. I wonder how we respond on social media. So, someone, if we could go back on the oh, platform, so platform and say, for all you people that have heard something, whatever that is, be assured that there is no problem. Then they can carry on talk as much as they like, but at least we know that our state's in the ground and I can go to bed at night knowing there's no problem. Mm. I got to bed last night having read that stuff saying, what, what's going on that I don't know about? Mm. Having personally been one of those people who've been up there on numerous occasions. I'll follow, yeah, that. I'll, I'll, follow, follow I'll follow that aspect up with that communications manager in respect of dealing with the social media. Well, it's quite a bit of the, the, the deal, and uh, so it's frustrated me for a long time that we do not react. I understand you can't run your life on social media, but there are some things that we need to nip off early on. Mm -hmm. Also, we must do things in an appropriate legal yeah. manner. Oh, no, I don't consider that. If we can't go public, on the, because of that, then we can't go public. It's as simple as that, really. And this is at that point at, at the moment. That's where that's where that, that, that is at. That's true. Yeah. Through the chair, there are some easy ones to back Tony up. You know, these things like I was accosted <coughs> by someone and it's been perpetrated in the media that there's been a major surge spill in Mother Brown, Tapu Tapu Atia Creek, and that's why it smells so bad. And I'm thinking, where does this stuff come from? You know, and, and it gets perpetrated. Agreed. It just carries on throughout the community un, un, um, unchallenged. I agree. This applies to be nuts. Yeah. Okay, sorry, carry on. The only thing I'd say is I hear totally what you say, understand it all, and having, you know, kind of had all those, those allegations, and it's very frustrating. Like, it's been on the for years and years, 10 years, based on absolutely nothing yeah. factual at all. Um, a bit of foam in the sea, you know, mm. suddenly wastewater is not at all. Um, the only, and I think, you know, there's going to be times when we do need to comment, but the only risk is, you know, if we comment, <coughs> we then are committed to commenting every single time because as soon as you don't comment, then it's like, ah, uh, you didn't comment, mm. and previously you had, therefore that means that we're you, you, you know, so yeah. you, you just, we're just going to. I think there's a way to... Uh, yeah, we can be a bit strategic to, about yeah, exactly. it in, in some of our um, one-pages that we yeah. have in the informer exactly. and things yeah. like right. that. I hear what you're saying, and I hear the frustration, and, and uh, as I said, we've got some stuff to, to work through with comments. 
Okay, thank you. And back to the work program. Are there any other comments? Questions? Um, a question about the, um, the footage. Is that um, still waiting on Māori values? Hey. The Tapu 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 Yes, it's still waiting on Māori values assessment to, that, to continue that process. Does that mean that the heritage issue has been dealt with? No, no, no that's, 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 that's part system. of the heritage requirements. Even though we were led to believe that at the beginning there was no conflict. Mm. I don't know that there's a conflict as such, is there, Ellen? It's no, just that that's a requirement of, of the consenting process. Well, I believe that the, the meetings have already agreed that there was concede, concession, it was sorry, agreement that it should continue, and suddenly it stops. I'm confused. It needed a broader um, eye, didn't it? As if he had consented a very like we needed a broader heritage. I think that's true. I'm sorry, we have reported that before, so you were aware of the situation. Yes. It is waiting for it. Yeah, it required a, a Heritage New Zealand consent, which yes. we weren't aware of when we started the process. We didn't think it did require that. Yeah. When Heritage, when, when that came to our attention, when yes. it was brought to our attention by Heritage New Zealand, yeah. part of the Heritage New Zealand authority process requires the Maori values assessment to uh -huh. be completed. Uh, so, Nadi Hay are working on completion of that at the moment. So, my they, they will send that to Heritage New Zealand. We will then get their authority. So, it's, it's getting that Maori values assessment completed and it's holding it up. And my understanding was that that had already been done. No, 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 no it's not okay. completed. It has, been, it has been agreed verbally, okay. but we haven't yet got the written document. Okay, fine. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on the work program? Everybody uh, happy? My, uh, my comment would be that is until we have our deliberations on the annual plan. And so they might go into it and so they might come out of it as a result of that. So that as we stand today, that's what it is. And that's early next week, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, um, I've been looking through this. Is there any work scheduled um, the erosion between White Street and the Woodways Harbour entrance? The no. use of the land there. There's no work scheduled, no. no. Uh, the, there had been meetings held out there by the, um, Avon Martin, who's managing the um, shoreline management plan process. Uh, so there's been meetings with residents out there, so it's very much front of mind as far as the <laughs> shoreline management plan process is concerned. There have been no solutions identified yet, and definitely not on any work program. Okay. You just note that the reserve at the end of White Street is losing quite a lot of land, and there's a um, Kurukawa sort of yeah. curiously positioned here. Yeah, we are well aware of it. Cool. Okay. All right, so that's the work program. So, so just one comment I was going to make. Yes, to please. Here is, is really what um, Tony just said is that, you know, this. Just bear in mind that the actions plan for the next period of the work program uh, in many cases will be subject to the annual plan for 2021. Um, so a lot of the works in here, you'll note the next period is going to spread into next financial year. So it's only if the unspent money gets re-included in next year's annual plan that those works will be, will be completed. And that's a matter that council will be determining um, Firstly, next week, but then again, <clears throat> finally on the 23rd of June, I think it is when the annual plan gets adopted. So, uh, once that gets adopted, we'll then get an updated work program report to show what has finally been approved in the new year's annual plan. All right, thanks, Alan. So, item 2.3 is the parking control bylaw schedule um, amendment. For Hotwater Beach parking, and I think we should include in the title here Robinson Road as well, because this report covers both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I have a mover and a seconder for the report, please? I'll move. Thank you, Tony. Seconded by Second. Phil. Thank yeah. you. Any discussion? Uh, could I press just uh, yes. firstly? Um, so, <clears throat> This is reasonably self-explanatory. Yes, it um, is. But, I, but I do have one big unanswered question that, to be honest, with you, we're not sure about, and that is um, diagram number three. Uh, we, at this point in time, the recommendation is that we impose a trailer boat parking restriction, basically on the whole of the area um, south of um, South Highway. 
Um, I'm just not sure if that's a bit of an overkill. Um, so I really wanted the community board's perspective on that. Uh, the, the main reason for that is that we want to create um, trailer boat parking on the road reserve in front of Hilton Park so people can park there as overflow parking from the parking at the ramp itself. Um, so the whole idea is to make sure that people don't go parking on the streets in the surrounding area uh, to avoid having to pay the, the, um, the parking permit. Um, but I, I am a fair bit nervous that perhaps we, we're hitting it a bit too hard that the, that the line where the restriction applies could come in closer than South Highway, so I really just Everybody happy with that suggestion? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. So do we need to change? Just through the chair. Sorry. Rika. Um, so I think, sorry, Alan. At that point, if we're going from there, are we including any of Catherine Crescent and Arthur Street if it's going to that corner? Yes. Like how yes. far back? Yes, like there would be a line. Yeah, that walkway goes through the Catherine Crescent as well. Okay. So it's right yeah. there. Right, right, right. yeah. Yeah. Sorry, are we having some technical difficulties? Oh. Sorry, we're going to get a map up for this right. Okay. So. You just want the regular ones. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So do we need to note down that um, yeah. change the recommendation? Heather, did you want to drive this? That's fine. Did you want me to share? Um, because you wanted to show a particular location. Do we still need it? Um, no, I, I think we're all we're happy, happy with that. With I think I... Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, it's a line like that. Yeah. So I well, made that to say where it says Robinson Road. We'll say Robinson Road from number whatever to number whatever. Yeah. Yes. Just want to specify the house numbers. But it'll also have to be Arthur and Catherine from number to number. Yes, they'll be the same. Yeah, Catherine and Arthur will be the same. Okay. So yeah, the the amendment is to um, Alan will give you the numbers, or Heather will find the actual street numbers from from Robinson Road. To Sarah Avenue, but that is just to reduce down in the Catherine Crescent uh, Robinson Road boat okay. ramp area. Okay. Um, yes. This is a bit slow. I think I went more pages. Yeah, I think that's near struggling. Yeah, it's really struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, here we go. Can you do it? Yeah, but, uh, to, uh, to implement paid parking charge of trailer boat parking at the upgraded Robinson Road boat ramp um, within the, and Alan will, and Heather will have to give you one. Um, it's sort of that. It's that there that's already sort of written, but we just need to um, get the street numbers. What we actually need to do is amend the map. Oh, so we need to amend the map we to, now. We just no, 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 not right now, no. But no. If everyone's happy with where I've pointed out, yeah. the walkway <coughs> and the end of the park, and um, that, if you just look at diagram three, there's a line behind the school there that goes out to Robinson Road. Yeah. That, that, that line there is what we're thinking we would do. Okay. So we'll, get, so we'll, amend, we'll, we'll amend the diagram because what you're adopting is approving these three diagrams. Right. So we amend the diagram to reflect that. So you don't need to include that. We're just going to change this diagram. Okay. So I've got to think here saying no one in, so I don't Somebody know. to amend is recommended by the area manager and, and Tony, the can you hotspot your phone? Are you able to do that? It's not here, Caroline. Do we have another hard copy? Yes, then it does. Do we have another sure. Tony's yeah. offline. He can't okay. get online. Yeah, just Tony, can I share it? Can we discuss what we're making? Okay, we can. Yep. Okay. 
Yes, well, yes we have. Yep. So, can I just jump in first? Yeah, yeah. So, um, the, the other option to, to consider is the, whether we need the extra parking machine at Otwater Beach, yeah. um, which is a $10,000 cost. Um, the uh, okay. Regulatory manager Brian Taylor would prefer to have um, an additional machine there, but it is not an absolutely must have. Um, I think the, 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 because of the area, the distance down, I think they need to have one. Right. Uh, through the chair, I, I don't know, I think you know, the cost of it, this is even so. for the summer, it's not a huge walk from where the because we're talking about the, the car parks that Alan's got in his diagram, the walk isn't that far. I don't know. I think it is. Someone has been saying, saying, someone has been saying here me that we should actually put a full time parking ward out in the rear in the summer mm. because we believe we're collecting under half the river and we should get from that parking. Yeah. And if we put another machine in and we put someone out there, I believe we collect a whole lot more revenue. And people, and that's the benefit of our great players, because it's all visitors. And you know, we I go back to what I've said for a long time, our great players can't support the cost of business. So it's, it's I don't think it's I don't think any argument that we do it tomorrow because our business is going to be down. But yeah, I don't think you get any argument from that. It's, it's just we need to put that machine in. Yeah. So, I think the other thing is just put it, we put it immediately. I mean are you proposing signage would be sufficient there and people walk oh, back guess, to that machine? I guess I'm just pointing out the cost of putting another machine in based on what the effect on the next summer is going to be on. Based on <laughs> yeah, I know what you're trying to say. I'm just thinking the $10,000 maybe just sort of hold it mm. as things recover where it's, it's certainly walkable distance. Maybe you still do the water part of it, but I think it's, it's not um, people can easily walk across the machine. And I guess, you know, it's pretty clear on Alan's diagram. It's just, these are all basically all the new tasks here on the car parks right on. Yep. Yeah. The question I have is around the bus parking. Is it is that that's free, right? But, um, uh, can I no. on? Okay, I think Alan and Bruce both want to jump in here. So just on the bus parking. Yes, Bruce might not even know this. Um, we, we are looking at bringing a further report back to the community board on bus parking to move the parking away from on the street at my place and actually putting the bus parking in the ball paddock car park. Mm. So all buses are parked off the street in the Very ball paddock car park. Um, at an appropriate rate that they would be paying. Well, currently they don't pay. That's no, no, free at the moment. Yes. Yeah, and yes. they create a lot of confusion and they have trouble turning around, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so we're looking at that right at the moment. So we'll, we will be reading a further report back on that. I think, sorry, Bruce yeah. just wanted to say something again. All I was going to say was just on the parking uh, machine is I think uh, there's a lot of money, but I think we do need another parking machine down there. The generally accepted distance is 50 metres. It's over 100 metres from those parks, those, those furthest parks back to the machine. Um, you now, if, you, if you've got to park there, walk to the machine, potentially walk back to your car, you're going to get people not doing it. Then when we infringe them, they're going to say, <coughs> I looked around within 50 metres, I couldn't see a machine. You know, and potentially then we're going to end up um, <coughs> not recovering those infringements, I think. I think we'd end up with a. I think we'd end up in a situation where we couldn't actually recoup all the infringements if we don't put another machine in there. That would be my thoughts. Um, and does this help for nice. when? Sorry, just when the machine does go offline and things like that. Yeah. Having two out there Definitely. is yeah. sort of a fullback, isn't yeah. it? Because yeah, just, just so we all know, there's two there already to get side by side. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think it's it's a yeah. Given okay. that there's a distance <coughs> issue. Would the price be the same for both car parks? What was that one, sorry? Was Given that there's a distance issue on one park, would it be the same price as yeah. the other yeah. car park? Yeah, yeah same price. So that, that um, maybe if the price was reduced, the payback would take longer, but there's less risk of people uh, um, defaulting. Um, that yeah. they might choose to have a further car park because it's a slightly cheaper rate. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Car park is the same if we uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought that the, the rates were set by vital. Again, just so we're all clear, at the moment there's two different rates for the two different car parks out there anyway. So mm -hmm. the one by the beach mm -hmm. is four dollars an hour, the ball paddock one down at the bottom is two dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So they already have that already have that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. We're talking about $4 an hour. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I'm saying because this is related to the beach one, which is $4 an hour, I think we should stay consistent with that. Delhi. 
Um, it's probably not the time and place, but I'd just like to register um, to sow the seeds of once a machine like that was paid for, looking at a model where a percentage of taken, takings were given to what would be self life saving. Okay. I just want to bring that up again because it keeps getting. Take that at our forefront. Yeah. Okay. Forefront of mind. Interesting. Yeah, Greg, we will, as I said before, we'll be bringing further report back about bus parking. Yep. We'll be raising that as part of that report. Excellent. In terms of as we generate income from the bus parking, will that be an appropriate source or not? Yep. So yep. that'll be part of that. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing I need to point out in the report here is that um, in the submissions to the annual plan, um, there was a small number um, of submissions from <coughs> a couple of hot water beach uh, ratepayers. Um, suggesting that we sh that these parks should stay free, that we shouldn't be charging for them at all. So just so you're aware of that, that there was some submissions to that effect in the annual plan process. Hmm. Are they residents or absentee? Uh, I think they're residents. Good Lord. Why would they bite the hand that feels? Um, <laughs> There are residents, I think. Um, and bear in mind, there's some businesses along the frontage of where those new car parks are as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was some people who actually had the car parks in front of their properties. Okay, so shall we just sort of look at this um, resolution one piece at a time? Because there's three elements here. Obviously, receiving the port report um, and recommending to council to amend the schedule. Um, I guess we're all all those in favour. Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. And then if we look at item three of that resolution, um, recommend to council to approve the out of budget purchase and install of an additional parking payment machine at Hotwater Beach, maximum cost of ten thousand dollars to be funded from revenue generated. All those in favour? Aye. Yeah. Opposed? Yes. Opposed. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Jeremy. No, that's right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. Um, that takes us to our next item, which is the Matarangi Community Trust Appointments Panel. Um, that. You move that. I'm happy to second that. Jeremy voted against the motion, and I don't technically have to write down unless he wants me to make it. Would you like that noted? No, it doesn't. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you for Thanks. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so sorry, that was moved by Tony. Uh, sorry, moved by Murray. Um, yeah. Okay. I can second it. Tony can second it. Um, any comments? I've met Ross. Yeah. No. Really good. Okay. All those in favour? Fantastic. Carried. Opposed. There being none. Carried. Right, community plans, two, item 2.5. Can I please have just that? Oh, sorry. 57. 57. 57. Wow. Right, okay. So, can I please have someone to receive and second the report? Thank you, Deli. And Jeremy, thank you. Do we have any discussions? So, Madam Chair, may I speak to that? Yes, so I found some, I've got some typos and some comments Some typos for you. and comments, okay, <laughs> sure, we'll add those. Um, I think that the, the option is either, there's three options obviously to adopt it straight out, to go back to a full public consultation, or just to take that back to the um, focus groups that we had initially back Quite some time ago now, February in the hall, in the various halls. Um, we have indicated right through the process, to, particularly to those focus groups, that we would be under that we would be coming back to them. So that's just something to keep in mind. I would okay. through the chair strongly support going back to the focus groups. Yeah, and absolutely. Maintaining that sense of ownership of those community plans. I think the other options um, are a little bit too cut lunch, to be honest. I would, I would absolutely agree with that. Do you want to hear these comments that I've got? 
If they're just typos, you can yeah, I can give those afterwards. to you at the end. There yeah. are a couple of things that I did want to bring out. Okay. And that is also the document talks about two medical centres. I know that that has changed in Fitianga. No, uh, so okay. has it changed? I'm, I'm. Oh, okay. So since. Yes, that they merged. Okay. Yeah. Take the moment okay. That, that's the problem, isn't it? It's the yeah. moment in time. But um, obviously this is draft, so yes, we can yeah. change that. Um, the Mercury Bay South document talks about Mercury Bay North. This just needs to be changed. Okay, that's just a type yeah. of can pass me. Yep. There was actually some comments that I had. I, I worry a little bit when I look at sort of the number of toilets that we have across our wards and and how we have to pay to look after them. And I know that this is projects that the community would like to see, but already for Mercury Bay um, South, we have sort of 14 toilets. And then I kind of went through and underlined where we were sort of, the community would like to see more toilets installed. Mm -hmm. And I worry that we perhaps um, are really opening ourselves up. And this could be the same, said the same for all three documents. Um, my understanding of this is this document is what what the communities wanted and then this will form a basis when it gets particularly to council to the long-term plan of balancing out what the community wants with what we actually can provide is it my correct understanding so really that's just captured from those focus groups and other conversations what the community's wish list almost if you like mm. so i would be um, we have had that discussion i'd be reluctant to change anything given that that is what the community has said they want um, yes. And that might be 20 years down the track, or five years, or one year. And I just make a comment, and my comment is this, I believe it's true, that we were told that Auckland City had the most public toilets, then it's DOC, and then it's TCDC. And of that, so the has I just the want to reiterate the comment I made earlier, and because a lot of people out there don't understand that the public toilets are a huge cost, and we've got to get money off our visitors, because their visitors use them, and that's the philosophy we're going to have to go down the road and adopt. Mm -hmm. And people have got to get their heads around that 28,000, 29,000 rate fires in Thames Coromandel is unaffordable. Mm. So what you say is absolutely correct. Of course oh. So, Madam Chair, I think, you know, sometimes we hold on to an understanding of information and we know what it costs to build a toilet and to service it ad nauseum and then to refurbish it after you know there's that that period of time where it needs um, fixing up again sometimes we hold on to that knowledge and we say to a community you can't have a toilet and i think you know that we should treat our communities with a great deal more intelligence and actually give them some of the facts and figures it's like reservoirs we need more storage for water what does a reservoir cost how many days water does it store three you know, at, at peak that's season, and that's on a good day. So <laughs> all this crap in the media and social media, we actually need to go out to our communities and give them some really good knowledge and say, we're not just flatly refusing this. This is actually what the cost is involved. We're already running <coughs> close to a 10% rate increase that we're trying to pull back. So I think those community discussions, we need to have the facts and figures there for the communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, also, the point that Dad has raised is, is, is very valid, and the question that I like to ask when anyone asks for money is who benefits? Uh, are we talking about benefits for labels or benefits for uh, business? Yes, yeah. Because I have absolute uh, belief that using those is uh, an extremely good philosophy. And where the visitor component is higher than the resident component, then it is very, very worthwhile. If the user component is higher for residents, then the argument is, is a bit more difficult to resolve. But where the benefit is clearly um, outside of the district, then I think the money is worthwhile. Okay, hear that. With respect to the plan, just going back to the to the community plans, it's is what's the premise of the community plan. So the premise of the community plan, and I understand what you're saying totally, because that's a conversation further down the track. Yeah. So the community plan is really, you know, we meet with the community, um, we ask them to come up with 
their dreams, their ideas, their aspirations, good or bad, crazy or not. Um, and then we've collated that into yeah. the, the main um, items. And so once when this is adopted or when they're adopted by council, they will help to inform the long-term plan. And that's the premise that we went out to the community sure. with is whatever you put in here will help inform it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily say that this is how much it would cost and and that that's, you know, at that point, it's further down the track. So I think it's probably, in my mind, and Alan can correct me if I'm wrong, it was a way of collating and getting together the community to find out what were their key concerns. Can I just point out on the front cover of every plan, uh, it says this plan will help council to understand what is important to the community and allow council to make informed decisions on prioritising and funding of services and activities through the review of the long-term plan. So it's making it quite clear, so right on the, that's why it's on the cover page, it's the purpose of the plan. So the council is not adopting this and saying we're going to do all this, it's adopting us for the purpose of being well informed in its decision making mm. process. I, and I hear that and I absolutely, like, that's fantastic. My point, initial point was just that, you know, go, going towards what Delhi was saying, you know, they may they may want all of these things and it's fantastic to see it in paper and that, yes, we'll look at these things when we go to make these plans, but actually have a real level of understanding that you have 12 or 15 toilets in your uh, Mercury Bay South or Central or whatever it is, and actually they do cost a heck of a lot of money to install and maintain, you know, and just, we just have to really manage everybody's expectations with that. Uh, on my comments uh, on this also is uh, talk about it. From a media point of view, it's essential that we articulate how we get to here. Because I am getting sick of reading the social media claptrap that suggests that we work in bubbles and don't talk to anyone. This has got nothing to do with any of us. This is us going out to our communities and saying, what are all the things you value? What are the things that you think we should be considering? And putting those onto um, a sheet of paper to be organised and brought back for people to make decisions about how would you fund it and when could you do it if indeed it's going to be done. But it's not its not the council's plan, it's not the elected arm plan, it's not the staff plan, it's the community's plan. Mm. We are bad at articulating how this stuff happens. And so for all the people that criticise us, they need to understand that we do go out and ask. The fact that some people choose not to engage in the program or process for whatever reason, that's their prerogative. But we try our very best to go and get the feelings and the understandings of the communities. And we try and get that through a funnel to get to the other end of it. On the thing of public toilets, I'd also suggest that, in my mind, I think we need to consider this being a district function. As we talk about sewage in the, our everyday world, it is. So every time you flush your toilet at home, the district pays for that, no matter where you live in the district. So what we're really talking about is human waste, and that's dealt with in a district when we talk about households and, indeed, commercial properties, until we actually get to the tourist thing which is a district issue, and, and not us, I would say, because... So our ratepayers in Mercury Bay, if they know they've got 70 of these things that cost 300 or 600 thousand each to build, and then what they cost the service once, twice, three, four times a day, and then go back and ask the question, so they're still at libraries, and we went back and said, do you understand that public toilets cost you on your ratepayer in Mercury Bay X dollars? I always say with the libraries, do you understand it costs you $100 if you live in Winnie to have a library? Every year, $100. Do you understand that? That is the message that we need to have out so people understand what the issues are, rather than thinking that we know nothing. Because it's driving me nuts that we just let this thing go rife. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, yeah, we're all in it. Yeah, we're all citizens. We're affected by it. Um, and we're accountable, unlike some of the people on social media, of course, they are accountable for nothing. Mm. You've got to stop reading it, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you need to, because this stuff's sitting in the background and it's like a boiler. Yeah, I know. Yeah, if you don't rip the top of it off, you cut your arm off. No, so. You're not going to stop people commenting. 
regardless whether I'm formed or not. And I agree what Bruce did. You start reacting to it, you have to do it every single mm -hmm. post. Uh, you need to employ more people just to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so, I, I think we, we're, um, we're, I love that business word agile. Would you like that word agile? I think we're more agile than that. I think we can pick and choose. <clears throat> the degree of nonsense that's out in the community and say, look, this is a biggie. And again, treating your community with respect that they can understand. You know, even with a graphic, I was thinking about that over the summer, a graphic that showed um, in order to cope with five months of drought, we would have needed 1,000 reservoirs. Each reservoir cost one point something million to build. Um, okay, well, that's a cool bill. Um, so each household would have had to pay X. Mm. So, you know, people aren't that stupid. I mean, well, actually, there are a few stupid people around. I may very well be one of them. But giving people information in a timely fashion um, and choose, choosing which ones to respond to. But just nipping that whole thing in the bud because, you know, obviously because of my conflict of interest and who I'm married to, you know, we go for a walk or out for a drink somewhere and get accosted. By people who, who know nothing, but we're not in the position, and my husband and his his work is not in the position to make public statements. So you have to be very, very careful. But it's very frustrating. Thank you. So if we come back to the agenda, uh, sorry, the resolution. <laughs> I what I'm hearing is that I think that these need to go back to the communities that that yep. gave input Absolutely. to them. I think yeah. that that's the right thing to do. I, I think they're. With solid information. Yeah, and there might be a new, I don't know how you handle Mercury Bay Central, they have a new rate payer group, whether you somehow include maybe someone from that in that loop. But Alan, did you I want to add something? something? We're involved. Yeah, and okay. And remembering that rate payer groups don't represent every rate payer. No, so exactly. I, yes. Uh, can I just lay, just so everybody's aware, the, the um, communication that we go back with. We're, we're not intending to hold more meetings or focus groups or anything like that. What we will be doing is sending the plans to them, asking them, giving them a month, asking them to come back with any comments that they have on the plans. Um, yeah, we'll probably put it on the website so there is a public component of people who pick it up from yes. there. And we will include likes of that Great Payers Association for Fidiang that's arrived since these were done. So um, so we're not we're not gonna hold into another no, no, round absolutely of meetings. Not. It's just to get give people the final chance to get to see the feedback. But I, I still feel that there's value in those meetings in terms of QA and there's also value. I know they take a little bit of organization. No, we don't have the we don't have the resources. Just, just just participated in it. Yeah. I'll read it out. The 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 we don't yeah. have the time either. Okay. okay. So my concern is and again it's around cons that I mean people can choose to engage or not. So what you're telling me is that we can't actually host any meetings because we don't have the time or resources, but the comms have to be so bloody good on social media, local media, whoever, so that people know where to access it so that everyone gets the opportunity so that when people do complain that I didn't have a chance to say what I thought. You can say, well, it's on our TCD's Facebook, our website, in the paper, blah, blah, blah. And, and it will directly go on. to inboxes of people that were involved in these You've conversations. You've got to remember that public consultation is being done. This is a problem. I, I understand that, but you're yeah. asking for feedback. You're not saying this is a... Yes. Yep. You're not, not asking for people to start a change. Yeah. But That's what Jennifer was just saying. So we're I'm just, gonna... just saying it's really important that everyone has um, the chance. Actually, there's some serious eyebrow action going on. Here. Side, side, side. <laughs> okay, so we just need to tweak the wording now of our resolution because. It looks like we're proposing something that's slightly different yeah. to what's in the resolution. Mm -hmm. Give the chair. So, Dolly, what you're talking about is full public consultation, really. Mm -hmm. As you're saying, everybody should have the right to, yeah. to have a say. Access to look at it. So, if that's the case, that. then, we, then it will be on the website. We would have to change that resolution to say then that it's publicly. Actually, it says here, final saying, feedback from those parties that participated yes. in the previous focus groups say, and yeah. consultation. The wider community. Yeah. Fine, whatever. We, we use their common sense and do the right thing anyway, but that's fine. Yeah, if you want to add that onto it. Yeah. Usual yeah. 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 Would you like to see yeah. wider community? Yeah, and wider community. I would like to see wider community. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's good.
most of the wider, wider community won't give a rat spec side, but, but those that want to need to have been shown that they yes, the opportunity to find that one. Okay. <laughs> and brace yourself for when Cameron Fleming sees this. Came out at okay. that point in time. Yeah, so they can just go to the ratepayer groups too, right? Yeah, yeah, that part of these focus groups that were held. No, I know, but they should be doing their part as well. So, so if we look to the resolution item two here that Jen has just added wider community, including those parties that participated. Yeah. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes. Opposed? None carried. Fantastic. So we are now on to <coughs> our commercial concessions. So that's item 3.1. We've got Leslie. Do you want to go through Leslie first? Oh, Derek. Derek's on the line. <laughs> 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 Thank you for that. Time slots. We're just going through. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Seconded Thank by you. Murray. Thank you. Um, so. Community facilities. Derek, hello. Uh, good morning, board. How are you? Well, thank you. How are you? Good. Do you want me on camera? Uh, yeah, if we could. Why not? Okay, here we go. Okay, morning, Marina. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so um, I've been uh, doing a bit of a roadshow around all of the boards. Um, delivering um, the paper regarding commercial licenses, operators, uh, concessions, etc. Um, and I've got to admit this is the heftiest one to date. Um, you can see it's fairly, you're fairly well packed with applications. Uh, we've made um, some assumptions um, regarding whether or not uh, the board would like to see activities on these reserves. Um, and due to the size of it, I'm not quite sure what you want to do. Do you want to go through on, on a uh, reserve by reserve basis and application by application basis, or how would you like to uh, um, take, take that into the resolution so we can see that? So yeah, so how we have it laid out in front of us is reserve by reserve, yeah. and then all of the applications listed underneath. Yes. So, so yes. if we go through that, um, How's that for everyone? yeah, that does that make sense for everyone if we just yeah. go through the reserves? Yep. Madam Chair, sure. yeah, can, we, can we, when we go through consent or reserve by reserve, can we highlight when we say approve or existing commercial operator, what or if there are any changes to the particular concession from yes. previous ones? Can we highlight it by Derek? Um, yes, sure. And also to note if there are multiple locations by the same concession seeker. Yeah, that would be helpful. That would be see. really useful. To see. Now, we did have one piece of correspondence come in on this. I'm assuming, I know we had some IT issues yesterday. Oh, thank you. Everybody yeah. saw the one. Cameron Fletcher. Yeah, Cameron Fleming. Oh, Tama Rate Page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anyone need a copy of that? Did you? You got it? Okay. I know it was just. <laughs> the technology <laughs> worked. <laughs> All right. Madam Chair, can I say one thing before we start? Is just following up on what Dally says, obviously there is a number of operators along multiple sites. Yes. Um, and I think it's really important to understand, and I've certainly been supplied the information, I, I think most of the other members have now been. Um, I, I, I have concerns about just plan banking again, against potential of um, other companies or opportunities for a, you know, the community or the young people in the community having an ability to start businesses um, being blocked by existing commercial operators. So I guess for me, and this is trying to understand the companies that have multiple sites, are they being utilised and are they being utilised to, to justify having a site? Yes. The Excel. No, you can't. Um, oh, can we bring up the Excel? Yeah, it's, a, it's a difficult format to do that when we go through line by, by reserve, by reserve, by reserve. Yeah, maybe getting that Excel document up that we had. That I nearly suggest doing it by operator. I know it's difficult now, the format's been set, but looking at one particular operator. I'll talk down, I'll just go against you. Meanwhile, I think it's backwards because until you've got the reserve management plan agreed, which states what are the functions that are going to be permitted on this reserve? Yes, exactly. 
You're doing this backwards, which is saying we've been trying to turn around for a long time. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, that doesn't say that you can't have five more operators on this first one we're looking at, for a car. Those are the ones that have applied, and they're there, but if I want to turn up and run my dive school out of there, or my kayak business, or my windsurfing, or my anything, I'd come and make application. But what we don't have, as I understand it, is how many food vendors can you have on that reserve? How many sports people can you have on that reserve? Because they're different operations. Because they're different. So I don't have any issue with an operator running windsurfing saying, I'd like to be able to run my windsurfing business on these eight reserves, because depending on wind and other um, activity, what will be most appropriate? So that, for me, I don't think it precludes anybody at the moment, because um, to the best of my knowledge, yeah. apart from two or three of them, where it's almost tacit that uh, they're the only ones. So, That's right. So for me, Buffalo Beach Reserve, I can show it. I'd love to yeah. see 20 food vendors down there. So I can share. I'm probably going to see cold drink vendors. So, like, you know, actually walking down the path or biking down the path, you can do that. So, I don't know. It doesn't worry me. Um, so long as we are being uh, reimbursed for the maintenance we have to do to keep these things mowing and ready to go. So, that's my comments with. Manicure, I have a problem with this, and I'll state my problem, but everyone probably knows it. We went to two years because we were going to review all these completely with the reserve management plans. We were going to review the fees. For instance, we've got coffee carts paying $350 or $520. We've got some absurd fees, which we're now going to put concessions in for two years. This thing has been poorly handled for a long, long time, and I'm absolutely think we're doing it wrong in the wrong way. People just rolled it over, rolled it over, staff year after year. We've been hoodwinked on it. We've been told as elected members, we're going to go and do the thing properly. And every time we come up to the long-term plan, we haven't got enough time. Every time we have the annual plan, we have not enough time. It's always and people are getting, you know, we've got people down the, the town paying $180 a square metre for a coffee shop. And we've got people down with a coffee cart in opposition paying $520 a year. You know, it does not add up. Mm. <laughs> Are we able to change the length of term, or is this a set that two years is set by well, council? I would like to see no two year ones. I'd like to see only a year and go and do the job properly. I can show you the point my type did make a. Can that be changed then? I don't know. So, Jim's just telling me here that Fung Mata. Oh, right, Derek. Hello. Hello. Um, through the, the chair, question... some, um, some boards have made some changes to some of their, uh, some of the recommendations, the staff recommendations, and most notably Fong Mata. Um, not necessarily all of them, uh, but some of the operators, they weren't satisfied that they were operating in the manner consistent that they should be. And so they have put forward um, just for one summer, reviewable after the summer. That might be something that the board might want to consider in line with the review of the reserve management plans and the upcoming LTP as well. Mm. Okay, yeah. all right. So that's something that we can do. It's a two day do. job doing nothing else for the Mercury Bay Community Board to go through all of the reserves that sit in Mercury Bay to establish what is and what isn't acceptable on those reserves and how many and what would a fair cost be. No other discussions, nothing. Mm. That's something that we've been trying to do for 10 years. Mm. We've been talking about workshopping that for a long time. Oh, yeah, I think, um, during that, yeah, I think I agree with everyone that's sort of commenting. Can we, the question is, can we stall on it now? And, no, and no. take the time to... No, you can't, because these people got to carry on their business. Yeah. OK, so oh, hang on. Oh, Derek, Derek, can you give us a steer on time frames here? And what you what we need, definitely need to achieve in this session now? Um, well, the current licences expire at the end of the financial year. So if you've got your current operators who are keen to continue their businesses throughout the winter, then they need a, um, we need to go through this and uh, approve or not. Um, you've got some operators who are only keen for the summer period. Um, so it's not necessarily that important, and they're they're listed there in terms of wh whether or not they're a summer operator. Um, 
what we were trying to do when the, the whole COVID situation, we were about to workshop uh, with the um, some of the, the, the ratepayer groups regarding the uh, the reserve management plan. So Faith and the team, and um, she was had a whole series of uh, meetings arranged. Um, so um, yeah, unfortunately the situation is, uh, means that we've stepped back a little bit and uh, we need to restart that program, which we're looking to do in the next month or so. I mean, Chris, I think that these things should be rolled out for 12 months. Yeah, yeah I think we can all well, pretty much agree. Just stay in the ground, and that, so I won't talk for other community boards, but the Mercury Bay Community Board, as a priority, sits down to workshop our reserves and the activities on them. Couldn't agree more. Because it's back to front. You've got to have that before you decide who or how many or what is it and how much. So for me, take what Derek said, we can't go anywhere, we've got, we've got to do something. Mm. So for me, I just said, why to every concession, I would say you've got the same terms and conditions and fees for the next 12 months, but sometime between now and then, and don't let it be in nine months' time, because we'll never have any time, mm. we need to apply ourselves in this room we need to, book a date. to what is going to go on our reserves. And then we can go out there and say, now there's going to be 40 ice cream vendors sitting on Buffalo Beach Reserve. Are you happy about that? <laughs> right. So can I, can I propose um, that we do exactly what Tony has suggested with one change? And I would like um, the dive zone um, concession for Otama to be revoked. So they get all of the other seven locations or, or however many they've got, but in response to the fact that there are toilet facilities and there is pressure on that particular um, dive area that that one gets removed. Yeah, okay, mate. that's, so yep, reserve. we can come to that. I think it's the, the okay, conditions of the yeah, yeah, No, I think we need to, because I think, I like what you're saying, and I think it makes sense what you're saying in terms of 12 months and we do a workshop. Let us let Derek take us through the individual reserves here, line by line, because I'm assuming we can't go back and say, can't Blanche, you've got what you had last year, but only for 12 months, because I think some of these are changes and some of them are new. I have some questions in terms of more being approved than what the reserve management actually, um, the plan actually allows. So, Derek, if you just want to take us through line by line, then we can have a conversation. We can address Cameron's um, email as well when we get to the the relevant. Does that sound like a good? Well, I was, I was only going to say it's, it's quite a different picture. If we can we get agreement that we'll only extend it? Can we make a decision to ex only extend it a year? Because I think the conversation is very different, in my view. If we agree on that and we'll do a proper workshop and actually achieve something over the next 12 months. Yeah, so can we just have a show of hands that everybody agrees with 12 months and we do a workshop, not the next workshop, the workshop after we talk about this? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. good for the operators because yeah. maybe that gives them some more certainty. And we might understand that more operators can operate in this space True. as well. So, um, yeah, let's, and then we can adjust the resolution when we get to the end of this. Sorry, Derek, so are you happy to take us through? Um, yes, um, just one final comment before I do, uh, Chair. Um, with the other boards, we've had a discussion as well. They are very concerned about the economic environment and the potential uh, vibrancy that um, concessions bring. And so what they're keen to see is that um, applications are open up until a certain point. Um, so if somebody else came along and wanted to operate, then we would uh, process and do the due diligence and then bring a paper to the board asking whether or not you wanted that operator and that activity on a particular reserve. Is that something that the uh, this board would want to see as well? So, sorry, could you just clarify from that for me? Are you saying that that applications would remain open so that if a new venture wants to start up, it, it potentially could? That's what the other boards have wanted, yes. Uh, so I'm asking, would this board want that as well? Okay, hang on, we've got two saying yes. Uh, I agree with that as a concept, but are there any advocated, sorry, any existing concessions that have exclusivity in their clause? Shouldn't uh, Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, fine. I understand that, but if, if 
if there was exclusivity that would preclude uh, processing and all, um, uh, another potential. So, Murray, you'd prefer to leave that decision to leave the workshop? Leave that decision to the workshop. So, okay. at the moment, there's none until we've gone to the workshop and cleared our ground. Okay. And have an understanding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, no. So, did you did you catch that, Derek? Yep. yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, and we'll clarify after we have our workshop. <laughs> okay. So, Fari Kaho is the first reserve that we've got here, and the only applicant is no, Dive Zone. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, yes, right. Any and everyone agrees. Yep. So again, this is an existing this is, with no concession, no concession changes to that to the existing concession. Correct. So okay. they're basically asking for three activities, which is um, shore-based diving, kayak diving, and kayaking. Um, they've asked for four, which is uh, was was over all of their potential sites, was to operate a, a festival, and we've uh, we're saying for all of their sites, no, allow the first three, uh, but don't allow for any form of festival uh, that requires permission under a separate process. Um, Madam Chair, I'm just thinking we could we could labour through 23 pages of this. Is it only is it worth highlighting the ones that have changed or are recommended to not approve? Do we need to go through every single line when um, it's an existing activity? Well, I've got some comments on some, so I don't know. Do we want to just scat again, approach it, or go through it methodically so we don't miss anything? Well, again, I raise this exclusivity of the uh, Mangaka Kaya Lagoon Reserve. Reserve Management Plan allows one concession to operate on or across this reserve. That's for the workshop, isn't it? Yes, yes. yes. I, I, I I really in that case, whatever I'm saying is, yes. that should come with a price because yes. that's exclusivity. Yes. And you've almost got a transferable property right mm. by being there. Mm. And if you sell it, you can say, well, I've got this, I'm the only coffee cart that can operate here for the yes. next three years, yeah. and I'll sell it, it's worth something. But I, I can just turn up and put my one next door to you tomorrow morning, it's not worth much at all. So this is the discussion we've been trying to have for 10 years and never got to. Yeah. Um, which lies us back in front. So I'm where they are. I'm more interested to hear what are the ones that people don't want out of here. They just move this thing on. Okay. To do the work with it, to give ourselves 12 months because what, I don't know what I'm wasting my time for. It. Well, Derek, <laughs> can you explain why um, the reserve management plan allows for one, but you're accepting two onto this um, site? Um, that's because that was the situation for the previous round of concessions. Sorry, say that again? That was the situation for the previous round of concessions. So both of those operators there have been existing previously at that location. Um, and through the chair on William Mangakar here, the reserve management plan, although it says allows one, it also states that, it, that council can consider additional concessions. Well, that's... That, that's the statement in the reserve management plan as, as it stands at the moment. How, how long is this piece of string? Mm. That's, that's why council can make that decision with your recommendation. Uh, it's, it's a conflict. Well, if it's worked and it's worked well, they haven't had problems, they haven't in, impacted on one another, they obviously offer very different I haven't services. Heard of, I haven't heard of any um, issues mm. out there. It's just one food operator and a cathedral co kayak using it as an alternative location to their That's just standard That's new. That was issued late last year, though, right? Correct. That is quite new, yeah. So they would have operated over the summer? Correct. I really think we've gone to dig a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. I think we're to do that, right? Yeah, yes. we will do that, but we need yeah. to get let these guys keep... Well, can, can the status remain quiet? Yeah, which is what staff are recommending. So, so again, I'm saying why, you know, unless, yeah. unless you've highlighted the ones that yeah, you want yeah. to direct us to, yeah. I see no point in, in going line by line yes. through something that's already existing. Okay. We're going to review and talk. Does anyone have any comments on, on any of the um, concessions? My comment um, stands that I'm not happy about um, what's happening at Otama. Yes, but that, that has been added to and will be part of the 
Well, I think we can discuss that now. We have a letter now that we we perhaps can address. No, and it's we, no, we talked about. The we've said in correspondence we'd deal with it now. Okay. Yeah. Well, so we could yeah. then, if we wanted to, say, right, see salt and desist at this stage for. Which is what the community or the ratepayer association is asking for. Yes, and, and uh, uh, the fact that there's no toilet there adds weight to their concerns, and I, I'm totally support what they're trying to do. Okay. That venue is this end of. The first, yeah, as you first arrive. Now there any, there's one house, two houses over there, there you're right. most of the houses are at the other end of the beach, correct? Yes, there's probably more like two, more like two and one being built. Yeah. My master photo. Yeah. Award winning master photo. Yes. I thought that was on the hood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's two, I think that nestled down into the beach there and then one across the road. I, I, for the chair, I, I think it would be, I think the fact that we've agreed that the whole thing has to be reviewed, including that particular one, I think it would be harsh to, to revoke that personally until we do the review, which maybe that falls out of that review. But Well, I I don't know. We're off season. Well, yes, the consideration should be. I understand what you're saying. We'll get off season at the moment. Yes. No, this is for the coming summer. I know. Yeah, we're issuing yeah. a year. Yeah, so, what we discuss in our workshop will be for the following round of concessions. So, if. Um, because I, you know, that's one of my favourite places to go and swim and snorkel, etc. If people are. Going to the bathroom in the dunes, that's, that's not great. So, why the dive zone has to tow a port of loo out there when they decide to operate from there, or they operate from um, where there is a toilet at the lagoon, but of course, there's no diving there. Mm. So, I think that the condition of the concession is that you're not, or is it a condition that you're not um, defecating in the local environment? Well, that would mean bringing your own port of loo, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, wouldn't it? Well, well that's there's a plenty of people turning out in a family group going down there for a snorkel with no toilet. And one operator going down with 20 people, they have something organised with no toilet. I would say, people there is no difference. People drive down to the bathroom. People drive down to the bathroom. They drive their kids drink. certainly down to the other end. But obviously, they're not managing their operation very well if um, that's happening. Uh, what? There is, in, 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 their, in their current um, approvals that they have, there is, a, a, and Derek can correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a line item that basically says if you're a remote um, user and there is no toilet facilities, you must use a proper toilet facility. So it is written in their agreement um, that, that that is a requirement of their agreement. And if so, they don't uh, comply, is there a disqualification clause? <laughs> Once again, Derek can probably answer this better, but if someone is seen to be doing something, then we can get our um, bylaws just, compliance just, team to look into it. Just before Derek answers, can I just ask Derek, probably a question for Derek too, I think, you know, we have this request or information from the Rate Pass Association, um, which is anecdotal mm. evidence, information from people who, who obviously live there or holiday there. Um, I would have thought that if we are going to change something that is the status quo, we would do so only where there's um, complaints that have been received that they've been raised with the operator first so that they've had a, an opportunity under the terms of their license to correct any uh, any inappropriate things that are going on or anything that's contravening the terms of the license. So the question really is, have, have we actually had complaints and have we taken those up with the operator previously um, to try and get them to remedy any problems that, that arise? And what, what I suggest, if that's not the case, if we haven't done that, mm -hmm. then I think we need to put in place, you know, I would suggest rather than decline, that we need to put a much stricter regime of monitoring the performance of this uh, particular concession here, yep. um, so that they're made aware of the issues that are being raised and they need, they're need given the opportunity to get their act together, as if they haven't already been given that opportunity. So are you aware, Derek? Um, no, I'm not aware of any RFSs, but it's a very pertinent point, Alan. Can I just say this, this has been raised exactly what 
out and see is they've been raised for half a dozen years, I know of. They've been approached. They say they ask everyone to go to the loo before they go out there. I don't believe we've had one formal complaint. I do believe there's a lot of anecdotal evidence circulating out of Pedo. I don't believe there's one formal complaint, and I don't believe we can actually take action until we have evidence. I don't think we can cast aspersions on the way they're operating without some evidence. I think that would be wrong. So can we so be okay with the ratepayers out there and say that they need to they need um, to provide us some provide so, or make formal complaints yep. with photographic yep. evidence? I think they do. But in the concession, they ask to have a van there with potentially a trailer, and in this letter, it has some details. Well, we've asked this things. question before, and they say they ask everyone to go to the loo before they leave, and that it's not. So this is twofold. It, it, it's one: the concession states that this is what they can come and do, and this is what they ask for to bring a van and a trailer, load of people, and then what the ratepayers are coming. So where they have given evidence is they've given dates and times of the number of people and the amount of vehicles, which is not in line with what the concession's been asking That's for. Right. So there's that to consider, as well as the yeah. mess to consider. Yeah. Can we ask them to put to tow a portal loo out there or have some sort of chemical toilet as part of their operation? Can we put that uh, into their consent conditions? Yes, I believe we can. I mean, when you're thinking about the uh, difficulty of towing a trailer with a portal loo on it, but then you think about um, motorhomes, they, a lot of them are self-contained, so perhaps that's something that they want to consider as part of their operation. Yeah, I agree. And what is the difference between a family group yes. going to the supermarket, buying a bag of sausages and a loaf of bread, and all turning up down there at all ages to the exact same place? There is no difference. The same number of people, the same potential outcomes. Just that one operator turns up with a van and a trailer, and they're all self-contained, they're not 10 cars, so... And one's commercial. And yeah, but... The, 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 the thing is that, you know, myself included, when I had a young family, um, and everyone that I know drives down to the to the lagoon or chooses to park down at the lagoon with their young children because there's a toilet facility. It's just that the diving's not in the middle of the beach. You have concessions, if you go to the seat, concessions for groups of all can, well, cannot be approved unless there are council provided toilet facilities or something. Those are the things that we actually get down to doing the reserve management plan as we go on mm -hmm. for consideration. But that's the moment. All we've got is paddocks and trees and water, but we don't have any criteria around that. Mm -hmm. So why are those I mean, if, you, I mean, if you had a way forward, we could do the rollover and take this particular application that there is a workshop and we may be doing the OP over. Just take it. Agent, there's an expectation not to turn up with multiple get they need to. Well, I think they need to adhere to what their concession, what they've asked for in their concession, yeah, I which I think says one van. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they're exploding a lot of it up. Yeah. So do we tag that out now or do we wait till the workshop? One van. One van. You have to take it now. Really no. Can we ask yeah. them to um, take a chemical loop? Yeah, and a portable. Uh, sh those camping toilets aren't that hard to get and well, set up. Well, in the canter, uh, canter van, they can't be very large. Why are they mm. stopping the to turn in loop before they pop over the hill, which is five minutes away? Well, that's what they say they do. Yeah. So tagging in um, one vehicle. I have to say it's tough on them because I, I oh, need to read the number. I, I think I, that's what they asked for in their concession, isn't it? They, Wait, I don't agree with taking the portable. No, I don't know why. Oh, I don't know why. Otherwise, every school group would take one. Yeah. yeah so I, I bet, also, I bet some of these other concessions are operating out of, out of beaches that don't have toilets. Correct. Mm -hmm. So why should, a, why should the dive zone be justified? to the dive zone in this case? Because we've had. I think maybe what. No, no, I understand that, but. Maybe,
Good day. Hey, uh, frozen now. Um, and you're in the meeting, eh? Okay. Can I can I make a suggestion that maybe you wanted to table that that we issue a um, which might move this whole thing along. Um, we issue a concession for three months, which then allows the people who are operating to continue to operate. That gives the board time to actually go through and workshop this properly, which is what they want to do. And it, and it won't be um, three months. So what are we talking about? Probably uh, so May, June, July, August, all to August. So we're probably workshopping around that August time. Uh, sorry, we're issuing the concession. So uh, a new concession licenses need to be in place before that period of time. Okay. All right. That's, yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll, I'm going to restart. Start and then try to rejoin. Yeah, okay, thanks, Jess. Bye. Just left. Is this the Cathedral Cove kayaks? Yeah. Yeah, that's I remember we talked I about. I had a um, discussion with that operator yesterday. Um, he's going to be carried around some, but and my understanding is that he has 32 double kayaks plus the tour plus his guides kayaks, um, and that he would never have it at any one time more than that. Well, I, I, I'm reading the memory, but we put a quota on, and I know quite a lot. 32, I think it was. 32 plus the guys. Plus the guy there, that's the number I was given yesterday. That's what I thought was yeah, the agreed was, amount. He was going more than that. He had a number of reports. And he came back to the board and spoke to them, and we put that limit yes. on it. Yeah. Was yeah. it 32? Was it that high? I it was based on that one. The guy takes four, was it? There was eight guides and four kayaks per guide. There, yeah. there was some formula that, that worked out with that. Um, this is a, to the chair, this is probably a question of Derek, just regarding that particular operator. We talk about 32, but that's not on the, on the beach. That is operating out of that beach. It's sort of a little bit very loaded. Do yeah. you, you see what I mean? Like, it's not 32 on the beach and 32 on the water. And only 32 on the beach at any given time. That's 32 in total off that beach. Is that how it's documented? I think it should be. Ron Ha Ha. But plus guides. Plus guides. I keep speaking to last one. To be honest, it's pretty easy to just go through. That's what I thought. Because we're going to miss stuff. Because there's new ones and there's challenges. I know. I'm really worried about this process. You can. Sorry. We should go back and do it. That was a that was a compromise that came with everyone. I just want to see it in the in the in the conclusion. So we'll I'm just trying to get permission. Did you want to speak to Alan? Okay, so you're happy with the yeah. you're happy with the answer that you got there? Um my question for Hahe. Um, Derek, is that we say that the plan allows for only three concessionaires, 
but saying for approving four, again, is it something that we should be looking at? Um, yes, again, it's been raised by other um, members that um, uh, it's something you workshop but through, but these operators have been operating there previously and they're not necessarily <coughs> operating there at the exact same time as well. And some of them are, are, are only operating there due to uh, bookings or weather conditions. Right. So the previous and we haven't really had any issues that we, we've had documented. They're all good operators. They're all <coughs> and working well together. So that's the question. The board can overturn officers' decisions if need be or request recommendations. Just through the chair, just regarding Ha Hei, the boom charters is an additional concession that doesn't currently exist, correct? Um, they operated there last summer. They were a late application. So they had a license or a license to operate. So if they used it or not, um, I'd need to check a Checking up the spreadsheet. Because I, I would like to see that one deferred until the workshop. Yeah, sure. And if we, we don't have any data as to whether or not they used it or not. Why do you need so long? Well, I just think the whole, I mean, I just think whole hard uh, eight concessions around that, that central car park. Which is where these would operate. And from my observation, I didn't see them operating out of Pahe last year. I know. I know. Right. There's a few new ones as well that we need to back up, not to forget. Yes. Right, did we, so that was boom charters at a new application at Hahe that you would like to see parked until we have our workshop, is that correct? Yes. Okay. It's based, on, it's, on, it's based on a weather. Weather dependent. Where, I mean, and I guess if, it, if it's too much swell in Buffalo Beach, there's too much swell in Hahe because it's going to be a nor, it's going to be a nor'easterly or an easterly, so the weather, you can't, neither venue will work if it's supposed to be in Buffalo Beach. So okay. I guess just based on the reviewing of the whole concessions and understanding what sites can absorb, I'd like to see how. Yeah. Um, this is the cart before the horse, this, Tony. This is exactly what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. It's been back to front. Well, we've done it yeah. back to front for 10 years. You're going to sort that out though, right? Okay. Well, I don't know about that. But <laughs> <that's fine. laughs> Madam Chair, I do just have one question, and I suppose this is workshop as well that we've been recommended not to approve the, um, the food and coffee people who have applied for Hahe Beach. And it says no previous food operators have operated on this site. Um, so there is a question about, again, that concession banking where people hold a concession. Um, you know, a, a good example is Cereal Griller. You know, like they're operating sort of 4 or 5 p.m. at night, whereas mm. somebody else might have had a concession during the day for kayaking. Um, it just doesn't. It doesn't make a lot of sense. This, Derek, you could probably talk to this at Ha Hey, but my understanding is because of the the cafe and the shops there in Ha Hey being so close, is that the reason why? Yes, that's part of the rationale behind that to try and uh, protect uh, local businesses who are already supplying that service. You could argue that for Fiji Younger as well. You know, as Tony Murray have raised that point that you've got people paying $180 a square metre for a cafe and then someone selling coffee down at Buffalo Beach. So, yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure that argument is um, sound in my mind. Because we have the same thing to remember in Mataranga with climate. So there's mm. a coffee cart running around the, the, the main there. And they're upset because they have a shop that they're paying the full whack on. And uh, the business part, it's a different experience. But the other side of that was, what's to, what's to stop then shop A, who pays $180, also having the car as well? I would say, so, so for me, what, 
the, is lacking is the vitamin C. So if you're talking about walking from the pub to Murray's place, if it was international, that whole hollow path would be full of places to stop and eat and drink. Or eat or do something. Or buy something. So we don't we don't actually maximize the commercial opportunity um, and the tourism potential uh, and then can pop money out of people's pockets by what we do. So what's our way forward here? Are we going to put over the existing months to twelve months and refer everyone to the Gulf for work job? Just with some, those, with some of those with some of those changes that we took had talked about and highlighted on the board. Yep. There's one here that I wanted to highlight, which is the mobile bread, which want yeah. to open up at Sleeman's well, Park. One, yeah. yeah, which is very, so, very near. Sleeman's and so that goes to the workshop. We're only existing ones we talked about renewing. That's yeah. why I'm asking the question. Would, yeah. uh, okay, I didn't understand it. Well, like I said, that. are we going to roll over the existing ones, yep. all new ones, all the other for 12 months, and all the other ones we go to a workshop and have a look at the whole thing and look at the reserve management plan and do the whole thing properly? So how do we clarify what's new? This, yeah, this yeah, is so through, through the chair. Derek, you will have a conversation on that. I'll use her as an example. You've got the Kiwi water ski, um, Bidianga jet ski. Are they a new concession? No. Uh, Sorry. At Hart Bay. Am I reading that correct? So that, they haven't been oh, yes. Yeah. Beach Recreation Reserve. So they, so they are, sorry, they are an existing concession on Buffalo Beach yeah. and they're now requesting um, Robinson Road boat ramp and are they requesting uh, Hahe as well? well so, so, right. so existing concessionaire but with new locations. So what I'm saying it. is we roll over for the one on Buffalo Beach and right? everything else is put off to the workshop. Is that what you're going to do? Oh, that we could do that. That's not sort of how I understand. I thought you said roll them all over and then review. Roll them over the existing ones with the existing places. So, Derek, could we do that? Yes. Because we, yeah. I think we really need to have a conversation here as a board. We need to look at these spaces. We need to look at the new ones. So we would only be rolling over. Um, existing concessions for existing reserves for 12 months, any new applications or new reserve locations we would look at at our workshop. We've got a couple of tagged out items that we have here for dive zone. So we could do that and pass that as a resolution and then pick this up at a workshop in our July, August workshop. Does that? <laughs> so th that works for you. We we're not making it too hard. We just say we roll over the existing ones with existing conditions, existing places, refer everything else to the workshop, and do it at the workshop. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Anyway, I think so. We're not getting anywhere. And then in terms of um, what we can do, at a workshop, we can't pass resolution. No, but we get a paper. To come back, so we probably need Derek. Yeah, yeah. I tried for number one, but she didn't let me. Commercial consultant. Resolution. And also, we need to put in those two paragraphs or two points that we had for um, Otama. Okay. So, Whereas staff ensure that they are complying with their application. And on that, yes, up into the resolution, please. <laughs> and then we'll have a cup of tea. Okay. Um, we lift that up for the um, dive zone at Otama. Uh, just the red bit. Yeah, and the second part as well that we left behind. Uh, what was that, was that staff reviews that in terms of their compliance? Yeah. 
Well, we've got it there. Yeah. And I'll move it up. Yeah. So it's okay. 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 We've got three meetings. What do you mean, three meetings? All right. Okay. Sorry. This is we. We've agreed. We've all agreed. <laughs> Sorry about this. This is a really um, difficult way to do this, Derek. I know you're sitting there poised, ready to answer all of our questions. But what we have decided is to um, have you. You've caught on with what we've decided to do. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Rational. That's good. Do you? You're happy with that? Yep. That's good. So we might need to see you maybe in person for a future workshop. Might be yep. a bit easier. Yeah. Yep. Come over to sunny Mercury Bay where it never rains. Happy to. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. And Jen has the new resolution up here, everybody. The light's just shining for me. And I will insert the, the dive yeah. zone. Okay. Just know that it was documented in red and I will move everything up. Okay. So all those in favour? Opposed? None carried. All right. Morning tea time. Now there's some rules that we must follow for morning tea. Oh, I'm going to... oh, thank you, Derek. Thanks, Derek. Thank you. See you shortly. Okay. Oh, is he coming back? He's got the, he's got the next two items. <laughs> okay. If you wanted to pop up the road and grab yourself a proper coffee, you can leave the building and do that. Otherwise.